Hey guys, it's Liv here, and in today's video, we're going to be using a team built around Tropius. Now, I will say, I do have to put up a major spoiler warning. This is a meant to be a stall Tropius set. So anyone who's faint of heart, click off the video now. Now, for any Tropius enthusiasts, though, welcome! We made Tropius viable in VGC. Well, I shouldn't say we. Uh, my good pal Rao and I, we ended up actually watching a Japanese streamer who ended up using Tropius, and we spent about an hour recreating this team. So hopefully we can get some wins with it. At the very least, though, I will say, uh, if at the very least, this is a team that I would love to use on stream at some point. It's a little bit too long form for videos, but at the same time, I did really want to use this in general. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. And if you did and you want to see more content like this, leave a like and subscribe. And let me know what you guys want to see next in terms of Pokemon. But with that said, let's get started with our first Pokemon being Mousehold. Now, Mousehold is the Focus Sash, the Friend Guard ability. This is designed to help ally Pokemon become insanely bulky. And with Taunt, Follow Me, Protect, and Beat Up, this is purely just meant to be a support piece for our second Pokemon. Uh, with the Trastal Ghost, this is purely just to get around focus, uh, fake out to my Focus Sash, so but then I'm not forced into clicking Protect Turn 1, it gives us a little bit of variety there. But moving on to our next Pokemon though, we do have a Nihilape, which has the Leftovers, which is just meant to help with Sustain. We have the Rage Fist Close Combat, Bulk Up and Protect, uh, with the Terrastal Steel typing. Terrastal Steel is mostly valuable on this Pokemon for just helping it defensively. It becomes a really hard to kill Pokemon in general, and it's great for different fairies that might try and click stuff like Hyper Voice and Sylveon, or just Terra Blast Fairy in general. Uh, with the Adamant Nature, it's just meant to boost damage. Uh, the HP is just maxed out, with the 212 speed being great for creeping Goldango, and we get a little bit more H uh, more attack out of going with 44 adamant here which is really just meant to be left over uh, so up next we have the volcarona with the wiki berry with terra blast water we also have quiver dance struggle bug and heat wave i'm gonna be completely honest i have no clue what this set is supposed to be doing in terms of the defensive investments i see the 252 84 in terms of hp fizz death ratio a lot on volcarona uh, and with the 92 speed i know for a fact that 132 uh if we go for the plus one stat i know that we do outpace a lot of different pokemon i'm pretty sure this is for creeping talonflame i want to say uh though i will say i'm pretty sure we can creep that with uh with 131 speed uh which would be no actually we we uh we wouldn't we'd tie talonflame i think so this 132 is meant to creep talonflame it looks like and then the 76 special attack i think it's just left over with the four into spidef just because I'm not really too sure. I'm sure I bastardized the spread a lot. Again, I don't really know what the Fizzduck Halks are for to begin with, uh, but I do know with the Wiki Berry, at least in tandem with Quiver Dance and other stuff we have later on for support, such as the Mouse Hold in the beginning and our Six Mon, which will be a great support piece as well. This is ultimately just meant to be a really bulky Quiver Dance option, and it's a great offensive win con for a lot of matches. Up next, we do have the Rotom Wash with Terrastal Normal. Now, I'm not sure what specifically the normal Terrastal is for, but I know defensively it helps at least getting rid of weaknesses to Meowskarada and also weakness to Goldango Shadow Ball, or more so the ability to be touched by it. And those are two of the most common Pokemon right now. I'm sure as well, part of the reason was for stuff like ignoring Rage Fists, that way then you could burn Annihilate. So I can kind of get like in theory what this would be used for, but I could never tell you the specific. Uh, with Hydro Pump, Bolt Switch, and Thunderbolt though, these are just great offensive options on Rotom. And the Fizz Def really, again, a lot a lot of the meta is so physically offensive right now, it just helps. Up next, we do have Tropius, the Mon of the Hour, with the Harvest ability. Now, I will say I'm not too sure what specifically the Fizz Def investment and the Spideff were for, but ultimately, Terra Water is just a great defensive typing on this. It gets rid of weaknesses to stuff like Fire, for example, becoming an actual resistance. Meanwhile, we're neutral now to attacks such as uh, Rock, well, not Rock, uh, such as Ice, which actually we're also resistant to Ice, but we're losing our weaknesses to stuff like Bug and Flying, which is pretty valuable here. Uh, with the Wide Guard, we're getting around a lot of stuff like Hyper Voice Spread, Heat Wave Spread, Expanding Force Spread, etc., which is extremely valuable in this team comp because a lot of the Pokemon are weak to certain spread moves such as Annihilate with Expanding Force pre-Terra or Heat Wave post-Terra. Uh, Rotom obviously still has to worry about Hyper Voice from Sylveon, at least doing a lot of damage because it's a Fizz Def set, and many other things here. Uh, with the Leech Seed support, Tropius ultimately turns into a really good stall candidate with the Harvest ability plus Citrus keeping it alive as long as possible. Uh, essentially, think of this as Celesteela from Generation 7, but this is Harvest and Citrus Berry, which is pretty cool, and a better defensive typing of Pure Water with the Trastal. Uh, final mod on the team here, we have a Sableye with a Light Clay. Now, I'm not sure why Sableye was specifically chosen over Grim. If I had to guess, it's because of the typing being better defensively with the dark ghost at least only having one weakness also if i remember correctly grim yep it does not get encore so i'm pretty sure it's for encore which should lock opponents into different setup options uh this could be great especially for really just anything that's setting up any sort of quiver dances where we could just take it out with a nylip or maybe any sort of bulk up mons that we could take out with volcarona uh, but it's a great support mon overall with terra fairy just helping it turn into essentially a pseudo grim i guess uh but with that said though that's the team and let's get right into the builder until then peace out guys hey guys it's live here and in today's video we're gonna be building well we're gonna be using a team around 
around Tropius. I gotta thank big shoutouts to my good pal Rao for this one. Uh, while he didn't make the team, and I will actually link down below the stream where I got this from, we spent a good, like, hour this morning rebuilding a steam from a Japanese streamer that he was watching who used Tropius, which is one of my favorite Pokemon. Might sound very, like, very not serious, but I promise you, I, I genuinely like this mod a lot, and I've been wanting to try this in a while for VGC. So if you enjoy, of course, and you want to see more content like this, leave a like and subscribe. And with that said, let's get into it. So there's Pelipper, Rotom Wash, Indeedee, Sylveon, Grimmsnarl, and Meow Scarada. So looking right off the bat, I think the Tropius is a decent matchup here, but it's probably gonna be late game. We're gonna definitely lead off with Beat Up Mousehold and Annihilate, and we're gonna bring Tropius to the back, as well as probably Volcarona, which will end up being a Tarot on. I also have a good matchup in my opinion with Rotom and Sableye. Truthfully, I think the whole team is actually really viable here, but I'm definitely leaning towards those four. Tropius will be a good wide guard option, especially if Sylveon ends up coming. Uh, meanwhile, I can use Volcarona is most likely my Terra candidate here, albeit it depends on if Rotom comes or not. Uh, I could also just not Terra Volk, as Volk is also just really good as a standalone Mon here. They're gonna lead off with Sylveon and Didi, this is perfectly fine. I'm 100%- uh, okay, so Sylveon lead, this is interesting. I think what I'll probably end up doing is I'm probably gonna end up just going for dual protect this turn, and just see- well, no, because they're gonna probably end up going for- oh, you know what? Okay, I know what they're doing. They're definitely gonna end up going for the Trick Room on Indeedy. So we're going to actually proceed to go for a beat up here into Annihilate. Meanwhile, I'm going to go for the Terra Steel here, and I'm going to click Close Combat. Nope. Well, no, I can't even Close Combat that. Um, I could end up going for Rage Fist here, and Rage Fist will still be decent into Sylveon for what it's worth. Uh, in DD, while it obviously... It, it's either going to go for Foul Play, or it's going to go for Trick Room. Uh, not Foul Play. Uh, it's either going to go for the, the Follow Me or Trick Room. And if it's going for follow me, that's fine. While it'll ignore the Rage Fist damage, at the same time though, it's still not going to be too much of a concern here. They are going to click follow me, that's fine. No Trick Room is truthfully a lot better for me in my opinion. So I will take this, even if it means I do need to take an attack from Sylveon. So we're going to at least get some good damage off on the Ndidi as well. I mean, it's not terrible damage, at least. Um, so I'll certainly take this. Uh, meanwhile, Sylveon's probably just gonna click Hyper Voice here, which, so be it. I don't overly mind this. It'll still boost my Rage Fist, truthfully, so I'm okay with this. Okay. So, Hyper Voice, and it is Life Orb Sylveon. That's also interesting. Uh, okay. I'm actually pretty fine with this. What I think I'm gonna end up doing, I'm gonna proceed to go for a... I'm gonna proceed to go for a Protect here. And I'm gonna go for a... I'm gonna go for a Bulk Up right now. Uh, ultimately, I should be fine even if Sylveon does decide to go for Terra Blast here, truthfully. It's a Life Orb set, so I'm not too concerned with this, and I don't think that Life Orb Sylveon will KO either. Uh, especially with the Friend Guard boost from the Mouse Hold, I'm not too concerned with this Pokemon. And even still, Annihilate's just meant to be a decent lead. I don't really need it to Terra here, because all I need is Volcarona to just get set up and then just start spamming Struggle Ball getting Heat Wave, which I can also manage to do, especially if this is a Terra Fire set. Now, if it's Terra Water, on the other hand, it's a little bit trickier, but I can definitely manage it on Terra Fire. So, they're going to proceed to go for... Ooh, they're Terra Ground, actually. Terra Ground is actually kind of interesting. Now, this is a little bit scarier, but it's not too bad. Um, what I'll probably end up doing next turn... Uh, so, let's see. So, Terra Ground. Actually, Terra Ground is a lot better for Tropius, but nothing else. Because I'm completely immune to the Terra Blast, and I'm completely immune to the whole set, truthfully. So, we'll definitely take this. We're going to get the Bulk Up off here, though. Uh, they're going to proceed to go for... It's probably going to be Terra Blast. I couldn't imagine any other thing. Uh, with the Helping Hand boost, it's a little bit scarier, but I'm not too concerned. Um, let's see, so how much should we take? And Terra Blast. This is Soko's, okay. Good to note. Okay, so that was a little bit scary. Uh, kind of wishing that... Well, no, because I would have taken a lot of damage either way, truthfully. Uh, okay. So that's fine, though. We can utilize this with the Volcarona. And I should be able to still go for a Quiver Dance, plus a Follow Me at this point. Uh, Quiver Dance plus Follow Me should be fine, and I'll have the spread options anyway, so I'm not too concerned with this. Uh, so we'll be we'll be pretty okay when it comes to taking out the Sylveon plus the Hatterene. With the Sylveon as well, having ground and fire coverage, this isn't too concerning, because I'm actually neutral to both with Volcarona, thankfully. And with the Sylveon also doing Life Orb damage to itself anyway, this is even better for me. They're going to proceed to go for Protect here. My guess is that they're probably going to click the Trick Room now. Which, if they're clicking Trick Room, this is still fine. I don't really care a ton. Um, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna definitely end up clicking Trick Room. I can't imagine that they're not. So, 
let's see, what is what is Ndidi going to click here? It's going to click Trick Room, yep, okay, beautiful. So we've seen the Trick Room now. This is still fine in all honesty. Uh, their last move is definitely like a quick attack or some sort of shit like that. Um, we're going to click... I think I'm going to click follow me here. I just want to draw in any sort of Terra Blast that might be coming in. Uh, and then I'm going to click another... another. Am I going to click another Quicker Dance? I think I am. I'm going to click another Quipper Dance here. Uh, because ultimately just getting this thing as set up as possible will help a lot more in the long term. And I still have options like Protect on both Pokemon actually that I'll have in the back to stall this out. Trick, uh, Hyper Voice doesn't really do any damage to me, so I'm pretty okay with losing Mousehold to that. Because I wasn't really going to gain anything out of it anyway. So, they're going to go for Psychic here. Psychic should do, again, negligible damage. Even with the terrain up, this does nothing. And I'll have the Wiki Berry in the back, so I'll be able to take their hits even better from now on. We're going to proceed to bring in the Tropius, though. And I'm just going to click Wide Guard into a, hyper, um, into a Heat Wave. I could click Struggle Bug here, and Struggle Bug also has a lot of merit, but I think that Heat Wave ultimately will be for the best here. So that's what I'm going to manage to do. We'll click Wide Guard here. Uh, if they're going to go for Terra Blast, it's fine. Tropius is immune to it, and Volcaron is going to take not a ton from this, at least. So we'll click the Heat Wave. Heat Wave should... It should be enough, I would say, at this point, to take out the Sylveon. I can't imagine it isn't. If they're going to go for Protect here, so be it. Uh, it's not a huge concern that they're trying to stall out their own Trick Room here. They'll go for Helping Hand plus Terra Blast. Okay. Uh, still not a huge concern. My Volcaron is fairly bulky. And if they're going to go for Hyper Voice here, again, does practically nothing to my team because of the Wide Guard. So, yep, they do click Hyper Voice. Beautiful. Okay. So, we're going to keep both these Pokemon as healthy as possible, which this should be very helpful, actually, going into the potential for Pelipper plus Rotom Wash later on. So, I'll definitely be able to take that. I'll be at, My one concern would be with Pelipper, as if it does have Wide Guard, we're in a little bit of a predicament here. Uh, it's solely for the fact that with Wide Guard, Pelipper would actually be able to wall out my full Corona. We're going to proceed to go for another Wide Guard combination. And then I'm going to go for the Heat Wave here. Because again, my goal is just to take out the Sylveon. It's really all I need to do here is take out Sylveon. Um, they're going to go for another Helping Hand here. They're definitely going for Helping Hand plus Terra Blast at this point. I can't imagine they would make the same mistake yet again. Uh, but if they do, I mean, that'd be pretty funny. I can't lie. That'd be super funny if Tropius just Wide Guards them to death. They are going to go for it again. That's actually super fucking funny. Okay. So, thankfully, this move doesn't fail. I learned that actually pretty recently. This move does not fail in succession unless you use Protect first. Um, but it's good to know. At the very least, it runs in the same timer. It just doesn't burn through it. So, pretty cool mechanic right there. Um, okay. So, I feel like now they're definitely going to just go for the single target attacks, right? They can't just repeat this constantly. Um, what are they going to bring in? They're going to bring a Pelipper. Okay, so Pelipper is a little annoying because that does actually potentially have Wide Guard. Which could be scary. Um, what I'm going to proceed to do here, I'm going to proceed to go for a Vestus Tropius. Because I feel like they're slow Pelipper on this team. I'm pretty sure Tropius should slightly outpace them. Oh shit, I have the shutdown window open. Um, I need to be better about that. Tropius should underpace. Okay, yeah. We're going to go for a Leech Seed here on the Pelipper. And I'm going to proceed to go for a Heat Wave here. A Heat Wave should still be a decent option, albeit... It's more so just, well, I could have clicked Struggle Bug, to be fair, and Struggle Bug would have been fine. Sylveon will take damage from Life Orb, plus also the fact that I'm going to be able to do damage with, uh, with potential, well, yeah. A Struggle Bug would be enough there, I think. Okay. So, we're pretty okay. Uh, Harvest can still actually activate, which is great. Uh, not, while it's not 100%, like in the sun, it's still going to be a decent chance. And with the Wiki Berry on my Volcarona, we're going to be able to get pretty healthy as well. Uh, plus, Trick Room should end this turn, which is really good for me. So, I'll definitely take this. And I can potentially protect out plus Struggle Bug through the the Pelipper Conf. So, I'm definitely okay with this, actually. And Tropius, honestly, will just be unkillable at this point for my opponent. Uh, they would have to essentially be... Uh, they would essentially have to have... What, what, what could they even have, actually, that we could around that? Uh, because their whole team gets walled by this mon, and ironically. Like, it, like it really... The only option here is Pelipper, which I could stall through the random spawn. Twisted Dimensions return to normal? Perfect. And we harvest our Citrus Berry. Oh, I remember uh, I remember one I was watching through the stream. The guy got really hyped every time this happened. And honestly, it, it kind of is pretty hyped getting this every time. Rotom Wash is going to come in. Okay, perfect. Rotom Wash coming in. Um, I'm going to proceed to go for a Leech Seed here on the Rotom. I, if they attack into my... So so if they attack into my Volcarona, that's fine. I'm not really too concerned with this. And truthfully, Rotom having Rain also isn't a big deal for me. Struggle Bug is going to go off. We'll weaken both of these attacks now. 
And Volcarona actually, if they attack into into the into the Tropius, Volcarona just kills the Pelipper next turn. They're gonna Thunderbolt here. Okay, Th Thunderbolt is not too enough. They're gonna Hurricane. Okay, so this is fine. As long as I land my Leech, I can actually stall through both of these mods, which that'll be really valuable. Uh, the one issue I guess will be with the Rotom. Uh, solely depends on how much Rotom actually does, or if it has plot. Really, that's the big concern. Is if Rotom has nasty plot. Because if Rotom is nasty plot, that could actually be kind of scary. Um, ultimately though, I just click protect here. Um, is it what I click here? How much does Pelipper actually do to me? Um, let me see. So I have my, so I have my 44 speed F, and I have my 212 HP. Tropius. So 252, 44 versus Pelipper. Okay, so Hurricane does not actually take us out, and we'll have our Citrus Berry intact as well. Um, I think I'm gonna just go for the Air Slash here. Actually, hold on. When does Rain end? Is Rain three more turns? Yeah, I just, I just go for the Air Slash and the Rotom here. Um, and then I go for Protect on the following turn because I'm gonna have my Citrus Berry guaranteed to pop. Um, oh fuck, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. Oh shit, that's game. <laughs> I completely forgot the Rotom's gonna outpace, and that's gonna take away any chance of the Citrus. Fuck. Okay. Well, that's really unfortunate. Um, but it is what it is. For what it's worth, I think Pelipper lived that turn anyway. I would have had to get a double protect off. Um, so, you know what? It is what it is. Let's get into game two, though, and we'll hope for a better game. Okay, so moving on to game number two, we're going to take on Tinkaton, Meow, Skarada, Garchomp, Tyranitar, Murkrow, and Goldango. Okay, so this is perfectly fine. I'm definitely not going to tear at Nihilate this game, but I still think it's valuable here. They're probably going to lead off. So, I think that... I feel like the Tar Garchomp might be a lead. Uh, they might also just lead off with Tinkaton as well for Fake Out. Garchomp Murko is obviously a good lead here. I think ultimately my lead here is probably going to be... I don't know if I like Mousehold here. I feel like Mousehold has some merit, but ultimately I feel like it's going to end up being fodder. Unless if I specifically Terra Mousehold, which Terra Mousehold could have some merit. Uh, my Tropius is pretty obnoxious for them to KO, uh, considering everything that can damage it would end up getting walled by Wide Guard. So that's going to be fun. Um, I think that I lead off with, I feel like a Nihilate and Sableye actually will be a good lead here. And I kind of want to bring the Rotom and the Tropius in the back. I could also just lead off with Rotom and, and Nihilate and then go for Volcarona in the back and go for Terra Volk. But I think that ultimately going for the Terra Tropius will be, well, no, not Terra Tropius, definitely not Terra Tropius. I think Terra Rotom might be a fine option here. Uh, specifically, this would help with the Asherata matchup as I'd be completely neutral to it. And they don't have a fighting type here, which will also be very helpful for that. So I might unironically Terra the Rotom. I was joking about this earlier with uh, with Rao. We were wondering why Terra Rotom had a had normal type, but unironically, that's not a terrible instance for it. Okay, so with Dual Ghost, uh, we should be fine against any sort of Fake Out option here. I'm gonna proceed to go for the Bulk Up here, and meanwhile, I'm gonna go for the Reflect on uh, Sableye. Uh, Sableye's Reflect should be extremely valuable at this point. And the fact that this team is all physical attackers besides Goldengo will be huge having Reflect up. And on top of it as well, the Annihilate can potentially get the bulk up off versus, I want to say most things, albeit it's definitely not versus either of these two unless they're slow. They're actually going to go for Iron Head. Iron Head's interesting, but this doesn't really do a lot of damage, thankfully. Um, and Gigaton Hammer doesn't either, so I'll definitely take that. Uh, we're going to proceed to go for the... Let's see. So what do I want to do here? I feel like I get a very free protect here. Um, in fact, what I actually am going to do, I'm going to Encore into the Tinkaton, uh, and then I'm going to proceed to go for the Rage Fist into Garchomp. This should take out the Garchomp pretty cleanly, and as Garchomp will probably go for another attack, and meanwhile the Encore will be valuable, of course, for locking Tinkaton into a move that it can never actually attack me with. They would have to essentially Terrastle into a Dark type right now to have any chance at KOing. Which, they're actually going to Terrastal Garchomp, which is perfectly fine. Terrastal Steel. So, Terrastal Steel is interesting. However, this won't really help with Iron Head damage. So, if they're Bandit Chomp and they locked into this, they've essentially just lost the entire Captain. So, I'll take this. Uh, Tinkaton should be completely fodder now. Which is great, because I can always protect around this mod, guaranteed at this point. Um, So, I will definitely take that. Iron Head will go off into the... Oh, fuck. The... God damn it. Okay. It's really unfortunate now, because now I have to deal with the Terra Garchomp that is locked into Iron Head. And while it's not gonna... Oh, that worked? What the fuck? That should have failed. That should have failed. Oh my fucking god. Why did that work? Because they clicked Gigaton twice in a row. How did that work? Oh my god. That that feels really fucking stupid. I can't lie. Like, I don't know. 
So I, I will say it's on me for not knowing how the mechanic worked in that. But that objectively just feels dumb. That feels really dumb. We're gonna go for we're gonna go for foul play to chomp in case we do manage to take this hit. But my god, that feels so stupid. How did that even manage to work? Okay, well, Chomp is gonna be in though. We're gonna be able to burn it, thankfully. They're gonna probably be I feel like they're Sandville Chomp in this comp. I feel like that's gotta be what they're using. Uh they're banded. It looks like it really does seem like they're banded. Thankfully, this does nothing to Rotom. Um, they flinched. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this really just isn't my game. I'll be honest, this just isn't my game. Though they are off skin. Okay, that's good to know. I really thought they'd go with Sandvale because of the Titar pairing with this. Because Titar just feels a little random on this team, but I mean, it's not terrible. It's definitely not terrible. Just there's nothing to really take advantage of it either. Uh, we're going to proceed to go for the Will-O-Wisp here. Um, I'm actually going to go for Will-O-Wisp on the Tyranitar. Just because I think it's a little bit bigger of a threat, offensively speaking. We're gonna go for Foul Play to Chomp though. Foul Play Chomp should do some decent damage. I kind of think they're gonna attack Sableye finally. Yep, they do. Okay, so Sableye's gone. So Foul Play turn didn't matter. At least Rotom isn't gonna get flinched though. That's something. Um, no flinch on Rotom is pretty huge. So at this point, I'm kind of relying on Tropius, which I'll be honest, I really thought that I would have cleared the Terra Steel Guard Chomp by now, which would have been huge for taking out the rest of this team. So I'm gonna need to burn it. I have to burn it. Objectively speaking, I have to burn it. Um, thankfully though, we do have a Terrastal, which in this case, I might need to pop it. I might need to pop my Terrastal just to make sure that I'm taking on this Mon. Uh, I'm sure someone's gonna mention why I didn't just, you know, go for the... Why I didn't just go for the Terrastal on Annihilate if I saw this thing going for Iron Heads. I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. Um, but I still think it was a throw, especially if this is just bluffing the choice item, which I don't know why it would be at this point, but maybe it fucking is. Uh, they're still clinking Iron Head, which is still fine. Thankfully, the Tropius will be able to turn into a water type next turn, which is pretty good for me. And thankfully now both their physical attackers are burned. So we know they have Tinkaton in the back and they have one other Pokemon guaranteed. It's one of Miascarata, Murkrow, or Goltango, which is perfectly fine. Rock Slide's gonna go off, that's fine. It should do nothing to Rotom and I can wide guard around this pretty easily with Tropius. Uh, Rotom voids anyway. Okay, so I'll take that. That's pretty good for me. These burns also will be nice chip on both Pokemon, if nothing else. So that's going to be pretty beneficial here as well. I could potentially go for Leech at this point. Uh, especially with the screen up, I feel almost safe enough to go for Leech, especially with the burn. And I think that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to Leech the Tyranitar, and then I'm going to go for Will-O-Wisp next turn. I'm uh, not Will-O-Wisp. Uh, Wideguard next turn. Well, I could do Protect as well. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to Thunderbolt into Garchomp, though. They've opened themselves up for that a ton. So, we're going to go for this combination of plays. I think that taking out Garchomp here, ultimately, though, will be in my best interest. Even with the burn, this is still going to be an offensive... Oh! Well, would you look at that? That does nothing. Maybe I don't need to... Maybe I don't need to go for Terra. Uh, I do way too much damage anyway. Even with... Oh, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> oh, well, that also does nothing. What the fuck? This mod is just really bulky with screens up. Holy shit. And the sand is going to pop us into citrus, which is great, because I won't be hanging on this fringe for next turn. And I could potentially even just activate harvest, which will be incredible. So I'll definitely take that. Um, sadly, we don't have the leech sheet up, but it's fine. Garchomp should die next turn, which should be incredible for us. So I'm just going to leech Tyranitar. Uh, we clearly have seen that it's doing nothing to us, especially with the screens plus the burns. So who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Uh, we'll go for the Leech, though, into the Tyranitar spot, because objectively I should be going for Leech into that slot every time. Chomp should die to this guaranteed anyway, so I'm not really too concerned here. If they're going to go for Protect, I'm okay with this. Iron Head will go off. It's going to do absolutely nothing. Yeah, Rotom doesn't take a scratch from that. Beautiful. Okay. So, Garchomp is gone. That's one less Pokemon to worry about here. That's the Terrastal user as well. It's gone from the field. And depending on what comes in, uh, if Miascarat is my number four, I'm going to Terrastal Rotom. Otherwise, I'm going to Terrastal Tropius. And thankfully, the Garchomp did so little damage, I never need to worry about having activated Terrastal before it became necessary. Um, I will say that Tinkaton is a little bit scary at this point, but it's not too bad. And I can still definitely work around it for sure. Thankfully, as well, Tropius has the Leech Seed up, so I can definitely take this. Um, and meanwhile, we're going we're gonna to get a free Protector next turn, which is great. Um, yeah, I'm gonna burn, I'm gonna burn that fucking Tinkaton. I'm gonna burn the Tinkaton. Because I think Tinkaton is objectively coming in here. It might be Goldango, which if it's Goldango, that's also fine. Tinkaton, okay, beautiful. So yeah, we're gonna burn the fucking Tinkaton. Because this will be very valuable for Tropius stalling it out. So, we're gonna go for the burn here. And I'm gonna go for the Protect on Tropius. 
um, and this should be good. Again, can't really see how my opponent's actually going to really be able to threaten this. But ultimately, okay, so Protect on Tropius, beautiful. And Rotom should be able to get the burn off on Tink, which is great. They were going for Fake Out in the Rotom. Okay, well, that's also fine, to be honest. Um, I could just get the Leech up on Tink then, and that should still be fine. They, they're going to be able to... They're going to be able to probably KO my Rotom here, which is unfortunate. Oh, right, because we have the berry. I, I kept thinking we were Citrus, but we're Citrus on Tropius, so we're actually fine. Um, they're not going to be too scary. And Tropius is so healthy at this point, I'm not really too concerned with the with the Gigaton Hammer. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to Leech Tank and I'm going to burn it as well. That should help a lot with later on turns. Reflect Waff? Ah, oh, damn. Okay, so that's a little annoying. Still not a huge concern in my opinion. I'm still going to burn Tink and I'm going to go for the Leech Seed here on Tink. I think that ultimately this combination of turns should be beneficial. And again, I don't see Tinkaton KOing me. We're fairly fist up on Tropius. Uh, they're going to go for Protect here. That's fine. Uh, because I could just on the following turn go for again the Will-O-Wisp plus the, plus the Leech Seed. Um, I will say as well, this video is getting pretty long. So I'm probably going to end it after this battle win or lose. Uh, because I I don't think, uh, realistically, if we get into another Tropius game, it's going to take like another 15 minutes. Uh, so Rotom's going to chew this crunch, thankfully. And the Leech Sheet is going to continue wearing down Tyranitar. I guess that's what happens when you run VGC stall, of all things. Holy shit. Kind of shocked that we've made VGC stall work. And I'm kind of shocked even more that it was Tropius that is making it work. But it's pretty funny, I can't lie. We'll go for Willow here. And we're going to go for Leech Seed here. Um, I have no real reason not to, in my opinion. Because they're either going to seek the kill into Rotom which means no burn, and that I get the Leech Seed up. Or they're going to try and damage Tropius, which means that my Citrus is going to activate, which is great. On top of that as well, I'll be able to Leech Tinkaton and burn it, which is great, because I could stall through it even quicker. So I'm not really too concerned either way here. Uh, they're going to go for Gigaton into the Rotom. Okay, so this is like the best of both worlds, because they went for Gigaton when, if they went for Playoff there, they would have avoided this. So despite the fact that Rotom will definitely end up dying to Tyranitar here, Tropius is essentially in a situation where it can't really lose the game. Because even while the... F I, I mean, oh, they're going to go for Ice Punch. Well, that also does, like, nothing. And especially with the fact that most likely Tankaton is clicking Protect here, I'm just going to click Leech Sheet into that spot with Tropius because they're not seeking the KO on it. It's a Tropius. And I'm just going to go for Thunderbolt into the Tyranitar here just to avoid taking any sort of Ice Punch damage unnecessarily. Um, if they go for the KO on Rotom, that's perfectly okay. Uh, because I think, I genuinely think that I could just stall this team out with, uh, with fucking Tropius, weirdly enough. Especially if Goldango ends up being that last mod, I could just go for Protect, scout what it wants to do turn one. Because I'm going to assume it's Specs. And, yeah, I should be good. I should be, like, really good. Miascarada being left will also be fine here. Um, Ice Punch does nothing, thankfully, and we're going to get recovery off of both these Pokemon. And they're both somewhat bulky Pokemon, so I'll take that. Um, and we, we just need to keep going for the leech spam. I really can't wait though until someone complains I'm using stall and then I fire back though in the comments with I'm using Tropius. So this will be also a really funny interaction. Tyranitar is dead though. Uh, Tropius of course proving to be an obnoxious Pokemon, thankfully. Uh, we still have our citrus intact, which is great because I don't even need to mess around with the harvest odds. Which thankfully they've also been so fucking kind to us right now, even in 10. So their last mod is going to be Goldango. Okay, so I'm 100% going to activate my Tarrasal here. Uh, because there's nothing that Goldengo could click that would actually make me not want to do this. Um, and I'm going to proceed to click Leech Seed here. Uh, now, I do have a nice benefit of the fact that Tinkaton cannot actually do shit for damage to me. me. Because I'm taking away its potential for Ice Punch. I'm taking away its potential for Gigaton Hammer. It has Fake Out and has Protect. Um, and I don't know for certain if that last move is Ice Punch. But I'm going to assume it probably is, if not Playoff. And either way, Playoff is its best way of damaging me. Um, it's going to go for Knock Off, actually. Oh, fuck. It got rid of my Citrus. Okay, so this is still not great, but it's definitely... A, it could be a lot worse. It could definitely be a lot worse. Um, That actually is pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Especially with the fact that this Leech Seed... Oh, fuck. Well, Dango can't get Leech Seed. I forgot about that. Okay, then never mind. I can never stall this out because it's Life Orb. Shit. <laughs> Very unfortunate, I can't lie. But this is what I get for playing Dirty Stall at VGC. Um, I will say, the Tinkaton having knockoff was uh not something I expected, but... Good play, because that essentially that essentially takes out any chance I have at winning this. Um, especially, I mean, for what it's worth, my way of damaging this was ice, was uh, air slash, so it, I want to act like it was exactly a great way. Uh, but maybe, maybe you know what, ditching ditching annihilate for Volk or just not getting flinched with uh, annihilate would have been great because I could have smashed through this comp, especially with these four. Not having 
not having a... I, mean, I guess their team didn't really have a great rare army. Anyway, not switching out Garchomp, truthfully, was the worst thing for them. But it worked out so well because I, losing a Night of Ish couldn't fucking touch it. I'm so upset. I'm so fucking upset with that game. But you know what? Hacks is what it is. Uh, yeah, we definitely objectively lose this game. Because I can't I can't protect around Goldengo. It's going to do too much damage. I would need to land like four protects in a row to have that chance. Um, But it is what it is. Uh, Thunderbolt's going to go off even better. Uh, Yeah, it's just going to steal the KO. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. Shout out to channel members, of course, being Josh K, Ultra Player, Mia, Zig Zero, Matt O'Shea, Nox Nocturnal, and Kawami. Your guys' support is greatly appreciated. Uh, I'm going to try and get some more wins in tomorrow's vid. I'm so sorry that we went 0-2 yet again. I really do not blame the team for this one, though. This team is, has had a lot of high ladder success. I solely think that in this case, it, fall down, it fell down to the fucking Iron Head flinch. Because I could have taken out Chomp and the rest of my team would have been set from there. Um, but you know what? It is what it is. Uh, with that said, though, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. And nonetheless, peace out, guys.